<laughs> Welcome to AEAC Vlog, guys. So today, Michael and I are going to take you through the caliber guns end to end. Um, if you're new around here, this is not the full review of these guns. You will catch the full review of mine over on my other YouTube channel, the Airgun Exploration and Advancement channel, also called AEAC Home. That's where you'll find 50 yard testing, 100 yard testing, sound, trigger, refill, shot charts, a whole bunch more. What this is going to be today is about two weeks ago, Air Guns of Arizona sent each of us a caliber gun to test. And this is going to be sharing with you guys what we've learned so far in about two weeks of testing, which is going to be a lot. We're literally going to take you um, bow to stern and we're going to share with you everything that we've learned so far. Now, guys, this is Skype, so the resolution isn't, fan isn't fantastic, but I will also be putting up high resolution high resolution detailed photographs for you to look at throughout the video while we're talking about various things so bear with us there if you would um, if you guys don't know michael he's the owner of the airgun nation forum super knowledgeable guy super successful professional shooter and uh he's got a lot to contribute contribute as well so buddy are uh, you ready to tear through this i sure am thanks steve okay so i received a caliber gun Tactical 2, right, Caliber Gun Cricket Tactical 2 60 30 cal. All right, and what did you receive, buddy? I received the Caliber Gun Cricket 2 Tactical 45 in 22 caliber. Okay, so there are going to be some differences between these two guns, guys, more than just the obvious, and we're going to cover them all today. But um, I think, Michael, I'm just going to start right at the tip and just roll right on through it. Maybe like, I'll go, you go, I'll go, you go, something like that. That sounds great. And if we have questions, we can interrupt each other along the way. <laughs> sure, sure. All right, cool. So um, maybe just a quick recap, uh, kind of the, get the boring stuff out of the way. I'm 34 inches long. This is about the $1,800 price point. Um, just really quickly, 500 cc carbon fiber bottle. Lothar Walther polygonal barrel. It is regulated. I'm running about 84 foot pounds and, and about the $1,800 price point. And so this is kind of stacking up among the high end boutique guns um, as a lot of gun for the money. You know, air guns are getting crazy expensive. It is what it is. But um, the reason I was so interested in reviewing the caliber gun is because it's, I feel like it's a serious contender for those of you guys wanting to part with your hard earned dollars. And so I'm really excited to share with you. What it is that I've learned about it so far. Um, yeah, weight. Um, if I remember, I was eight and a half pounds, full of air, 300 bar fill, by the way, eight, eight and a half pounds, um, without the bipod, and about 10 pounds, 10 pounds, two ounces, something like that, with the scope and the mounts. And we'll get into that as well. Buddy, you want to do a quick overview and then we'll hop into it? Yes, yes. Uh, so, aside from the obvious, of uh, being a different caliber. This is a 22 caliber. Steve has the uh, 60 version, which has the 24 inch barrel. And I have the 45 version. I only have the 18 inch barrel. So I also have a smaller uh, air bottle and air, air reservoir. So it's going to be a little bit shorter, a little bit lighter, more compact, a little bit less air, a little bit less power. But aside from that, it's just like yours. Cool. And I am going to get into some 50-yard results today, guys, but the final, final stuff that you'll catch on the fancy video will be over on AEC Home in about two weeks. I just thought I wanted to add. You made me think of that somehow, buddy, in yeah. case people are thinking this is going to be the, the usual 25-yard call that I do on AEC Vlog. I wasn't comfortable running 84 foot-pounds in the backyard, so I drove my hiney out into the country and did some initial results, which I'm going to share with you here in a minute. Okay, so um, tip to tip. So this gun at 84 foot pounds, surprisingly, was not, um, let me move this into the frame so you guys can see, was really not loud. So this OEM moderator just on threads, there it is, exposing the barrel at 600 millimeter, by the way, 23 and a half inches, Lothar Walther polygonal. Um, really easy access for cleaning. I was able to get a patch worm in it, no problem. But up here at the business end, uh, there are one half inch UNF threads provided by Caliber Gun so that you can affix your favorite moderator. And a funny little story I wanted to share with you guys. So 
when I first got this thing out into the country and I had this new MTC Copperhead F2 compact scope on the gun, optically centered, I was 150 yards away from some steel silhouettes that we had at the far end of our range that we use for our tactical practice and stuff with, with our powder burners. And I slapped on this new moderator from Air Guns of Arizona. It's a zero dB, but it's different than the original ones. It's texture different. I don't know what they're going to call it. I haven't seen it on their website yet. But to me, it looks much, I like it better the way it looks. It seems to be a little bit longer. It has a little insert in here so that you can not only play with one half inch UNF, but um, what's it called, Michael? I can't remember. There's a uh, little ins, ins go ahead, sorry. The, the muzzle flip? Yeah, no, the little insert at the back end of the moderator where you can use it with one half inch UNF and something else. Ed Gun uses it. Oh, gosh. The, the I, size I, is M M18, I think. The yeah, MF. something like that. But it'll work with other guns, too. That's what's cool about it. Anyway, the story is I, I had this scope optically centered. I just took a wild, crazy holdover of like, uh, I don't know, maybe um, – 10 inches, something like that. And I let three fly just right out of the gate at that target down there. And it was bang, bang, bang. And here's a picture up on the screen for my shock. So for me, that spoke volumes to the um, precision in the milling, in the assembly of this gun, that everything was so well lined up that I could just throw an optically centered scope on it and hit center mass on a you know, medium-sized bodied steel silhouette at 150 yards just right out of the gate without making any any um, adjustments at all. And I was kind of just loosely speed shooting those that group, and it wound up being like three, four inches with the, the three or four. But um, just wanted to kind of, you know, recap and that it's, it's not loud. The shroud does a great job, but it was even quieter with this, and it didn't seem to disturb the flight path of, at all of um, that pallet. They were flying true all the way to 150 yards. I was watching them. No wobble, no flash, no um, no funky stuff. All right, I'll shut up and you can go, bud. <laughs> well, I have a very similar story, actually. Um, I had this uh, Hawk Sidewinder scope mounted on um, an Air Max Cayman, and I took it off there, slapped it on here, and I uh, took a few shots. I was at 40 yards, mm -hmm. and it was only about one inch um, off center for a bullseye. Um, Which is amazing. It's a testament to how true their engineering is. Yeah, it really is. Like, I, you know, I can't speak for Michael, guys, but I, I'm able to review a lot of air guns. And on an optical center scope, it's amazing how you'll, you'll mount a scope up there. Sports match mounts are the mounts I use all, all the time, guys, by the way. They're incredibly true. And um, it's amazing how far you can be like a foot off at 50 yards or six inches off at 25 yards. And it was just, it made an impression to right out of the gate. And, uh, you know, with the, these caliber guns, made in the Czech Republic, by the way. And it just really spoke to the precision and, and um, how seriously they take their assembly and milling. Pretty yeah. cool. It's, it's a neat feeling when you just slap a scope on and you're like, oh, I almost hit the bullseye. Yeah, crazy. Gets me excited. And, and I also want to touch on the shroud like you did. Mm -hmm. um, this shroud is a functional shroud. It's not just for aesthetics. Um, I took, actually, I could probably take it off right now. Oh, boy. Put your earplugs in. Nah, I may have cleaned it. Uh, anyways, <laughs> to prove that the shroud actually works, um, I removed the shroud when I cleaned the barrel. And... The, the shroud redirected a whole bunch of uh, lead dust, which where the term LDC came from, you know, lead dust back onto the barrel. Uh -huh. And I took a Q-tip and I drew a smiley face. Oh, yeah, I have tons of that. Through the, through the lead dust. Mm -hmm. So that's how you can tell if the shroud is actually working. Aside really? From I just listened to it. If it's quieter for me. Yeah, I don't know if you guys can see the stripes on there. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so, all over my finger now, too. <laughs> did you just lick your finger? No, I just pretended. I was make-believe, like Mr. Rogers. <laughs> oh, geez. But yes, the shroud is effective as well. Um, I opted to put this small Donnie uh, Tatsu on there um, just to keep in line with the whole compact version that I have. 
Mm -hmm. And it was more than adequate with the shroud for my backyard. How many foot pounds are you running? Did you know? You do the math? So it's about uh, 32 to 33 foot pounds. All right. Yeah. I was surprised that 84 foot pounds, I was expecting a big bang. And I didn't get a big bang. I got kind of a big, a big, I got a, a, just a nice, clean, strong shot cycle. And it did get quieter with this new zero dB, but um, it was very, it, it, it didn't strike me as loud by itself. And I thought that was pretty cool. It's yeah. wacky, cracky, but it's not, it's not anything like, you know, a loud air gun. Right. Yeah. I agree. All right. Um, so barrel. So caliber gun provides different barrels, guys, with these crickets, depending on, um, I won't steal Michael's thunder, but, but depending on um, which model you go with, like length, caliber, these kinds of things. The 30 cal, um, tactical 260, does come with a Lothar Walther polygonal barrel. Um, it's 600 millimeter. I, I think you said 24 inches, but I think it's about 23 and a half inches, something like that. Yeah, I rounded. Um, 600. Sorry. I rounded up. You rounded up. You did. <laughs> <laughs> um, but 600 millimeter is always kind of the sweet spot. You know, when you go to the competitions, you'll see 500 to 700, but you'll see a lot of guys running the 600 millimeter barrel because that's a good comp, a good combination of. Um, efficiency power yet it's not so long that you're not dealing with like you have to be super precise in your hold and approach because of dwell time you're not battling harmonics as much so it was really cool to see him go with the 600 and as you guys probably saw you're kind of in this area here is the barrel obviously it's a bullpup um maybe before i get into my accuracy results sorry i don't want me to talk over you i might have missed it but oh. uh, your barrel is unchoked, correct? Yes, good call. So, yeah, it's unchoked in this gun. Um, thank you for reminding me of that. And we're going to get into that. But maybe before I share my results with slugs and pellets, you want to kind of give them an overview of what comes with yours? Sure, yep. So the Cricut 245 version comes with uh, just under an 18-inch barrel. It's like 17.8 inches. And... Uh, both the I mean, look at look, look at my notes. Yeah, cheater. Yeah. <laughs> so both the 45 and the 60 models come with CZ barrels in 22 caliber. Uh, the difference is in the 45, which is the 18 inch barrel, it comes with a choked uh, barrel. Aha. Uh -huh. In the 60 version, which is just under the 24 inch barrel, it comes with an unchoked CZ barrel. Interesting. Yeah. I wonder why caliber gun does that. You know, the thing that comes to mind is that I've always kind of felt like the bigger pellets, like the like the 30 cal and the 357 pellets seem to do better in non-choke barrels. And those barrels also kind of like slugs too. And it seems like with the 177, 225, the Diablo shape pellet, you know, the CZ barrels that wants a choke barrel. I don't know. That's always been my findings. Do you have anything to contribute to that? Yeah, well, I think they're, you know, slugs are hot these days. Mm -hmm. And uh, aside from shooting Diabolo pellets, I think that uh, they they might have their eye on uh, on the future of slugs with the unchoked barrels. Mm -hmm. A lot of people hey. are a lot of people are uh, experimenting with those nowadays. Mm hmm. Hey, I, I, I just realized that I said Diablo, and you see a Diabolo, yeah. and that drives the audience freaking bananas. I always get a handful of comments on that. Guys, the reason I pronounce it like that is because when I went to the Czech Republic to do the factory tour video for you guys at the JSB plant, I, I, was, I actually was able to meet Mr. Joseph Schultz Bohumen, the owner, JSB, and that's how he says it. And that's how they all say it there, Diablo, Diablo, Diablo. No one goes Diabolo. I know. <laughs> like we do here in the South. No, but everyone corrects me and says that it's Diabolo, Steve. It's not Diablo, no matter where they are in the world. So I don't care how you guys say it. I'm just saying it out of respect how they say it in the, in the check at the JSB plant. So I figured I'd touch on that just to head all those comments off at the pass. I was just poking the bear over there. <laughs> it's all good, buddy. Okay, so um, accuracy results. So 
as I mentioned, I went straight to 50 yards. I wasn't comfortable playing with 84 foot pounds in the backyard here in residential. And my findings were basically that um, the barrel and the gun, as it arrived to me, I haven't fiddled with the tune, um, is pushing a 44 grain pellet to 910-ish, 920-ish, something like that. And the barrel liked all of the variants of the JSB 44, okay? And what I mean by that is it liked, of course, the, um, the JSB branded JSB 44. It liked the Day State branded JSB 44. JSB makes all these pellets, guys. It liked the FX branded JSB 44. And it liked the 30 Cal Hades, which is a JSB pellet as well. And um, I'll put this up on the screen, of course, for you. But here's my 50-yard results for, for those four pellets. Um, the one that it got a little funky with, if I remember, were these Emperor Lights. You'll just have to look at the screen and for, the, you know, for what actually is. I just can't remember back 10 days. I'm getting old and crazy, and I've had a lot going on in my world the last couple weeks. That's why I've been a little bit uh, down and out. But... Um, it, it liked these less for some reason, and and that's just going to be an experimenting game um, on your guys' side because that's that's going to have more to that's going to have less to do with the branding that's on the pellet and more to do with the batch that was run at the plant because when you go to JSB they got like 65 or 70 machines all running at the same time with different dyes in them in different states of of newness as far as the dyes go. And that's why we see all these variants in these different pellets as we go. Um, and it's also going to depend on what your barrel likes. So you're just going to have to figure that out. But I'd encourage you to definitely get all the JSB 44 variants, including um, the Hades. Um, I did, this is kind of cool, I did hand feed a couple of Polymag 44 grains, also made by JSB. They don't fit in the magazine. But I hand fed three of them. I didn't run accuracy, but I shot them really far out to 150 yards just to watch what the pellet did. And it just, it was, it was tracking nice and straight. I didn't see anything funky. So when I get to filming 50 and 100 here um, later in the week and next week, I will try these so that you guys know where, um, where you'll be at with them. Okay, so then um, I tried the 50 grain JSB variants as well. And I wasn't getting the accuracy. I was getting like inch, inch and a half, maybe inch and a quarter at 50 yards. Not terrible, certainly good enough to whack a pig with or whatever, or a large rodent. But um, I just wasn't getting the accuracy out of it. Now, that being said, I have a feeling that was because I was running 890-ish with a 50 grain. And, and the time I've spent learning this barrel, it really wants to be between kind of 910 and 920, no matter what, no matter what you shoot through it. And so I have a feeling that if I just came to the back here and I, this is an external hammer spring adjuster. If I turned that speed up with that 50 grain from 890 up to a 910, 920, I have a feeling they would have start, they would, what, making up words now, they would have start fl flying even tighter at 50 yards. And the reason I think that is because I also tested slugs. I tested all different weights of slugs, like a high 30 grain on all the way up into 60 grains. And the gun really zeroed in on um, the 44 grain Nielsen's and the 44 grain hybrids. Here's my 50 yard um, results from that. Five and five at 50. This one here is the, uh, that was the, uh, hybrids and I think this is the Nielsen specialty ammo over on this side and, and from memory they were running um, 910 920 same thing so I just think I just made it made me feel like anything that I put through here that's running in that window velocity it's going to stabilize and do well and so that's kind of where I'm at now we'll drill down on that in the full review by the way to be exact these are the 47.2 grain NSA Nielsen Specialty Ammo, and the um, 44.5 grain FX Hybrid slugs. Um, now, interestingly, the slugs, <laughs> so check this out. So, so this is my slugs, I should be really clear. This is, this is my slugs hand loading, all right? They did fit 
in the magazine. However, these two slugs tested um, four times, one, two, three, four. Look what it did. It was putting like, it was putting all in the same hole and it threw one like in each batch with the magazine. And I have a feeling that's because these rubber bands that run around the circumference of the magazine, when you put the slug in there, my guess is they interface with that nose of the slug and, and maybe change the way it's being fed into the chamber when you're cycling it. That's my best guess, I don't know. What I do know is that I quad tested it. It's a laser beam at 50, hand loading, and one, one and three, or one and four, one and five every time would throw when I did the mags. Ooh, that's a juicy nugget right there. Yeah. Um, again, I'll, I'm going to work more on it when I get the cameras rolling this week and next. But um, I don't know. I think I'm going to shut up and let you talk, bro. But, okay. Do they make a, a single shot loader for this? I don't know I, if they made if they did I would have thought Air Guns of Arizona would have sent it because if I'm not mistaken Air Guns of Arizona Precision Air Distribution they're the exclusive importers now for Caliber Gun and that's where these two guns came to Michael and I from um, so you would have thought anything they wanted in the review they would have sent it so, sent it sent so I honestly don't know yeah well to touch on that these are like some of the first ones that you know hit our shores that came in because I know that there are additional accessories that um, they're either going to include or, or have available. Like the, um, you notice this hole in the, the bottom of the buttstock? Uh-huh. They, I, when I was there over Christmas, because um, I have family in Arizona, they make a monopod that comes right out of the buttstock. Oh, cool. So whether or not that. they make a single shot trade, who knows, but... I'm sure there's accessories coming. Mm -hmm. um, oh, you want to do your accurate? See, yeah, you want to just yeah, sure. cover your so, <clears throat> In order to keep true to what you're doing, uh -huh. I wanted to shoot this gun just like it came to me from the factory. Yeah. Um, or you could say from precision air gun distribution uh, because it doesn't come all in one piece from the Czech Republic. They have to put it together. Um, once it hits our shores. Yeah, and we want to review them how you're going to get them. That's the big thing on my side, so that yes. the information I'm giving you is valid. Yeah, so yeah. It, it, it was really challenging for me because, you know, I like to get in there and, and tune it to my liking. But <laughs> I was like, you know what? I'm going to stick to Steve's method, and I'm going to shoot it just like it came to me. Right. And uh, it came shooting pretty hot. Okay. Yeah. So it came shooting the 18 grains, about 930 plus feet per second. Which is pushing it. Which I think is a little bit fast for a Diablo yeah. pellet. My experience is that pellet likes to be 850 to 880. That's the sweet spot. That's where, well, that's where I like it too. But yeah, you can, you can sometimes get away with 9, 920 up close, but that's pushing it. Yes. But stay <laughs> true. Uh, I shot it like it, like it came to me. Uh, and, uh, it, it shot. It shot pretty well at that fast. I was surprised. Are you going to email me some pictures? I can show these guys in the oh. video. Yeah, sure okay. will. Um, we didn't. We're not going to do shot trucks just yet. We're just doing. Accurate. No, we'll get. We'll get to all that. Okay. Okay. So yeah. So it was shooting 930 feet per second, uh, oh. with the 18 grain, and it was shooting about 825 feet per second with the monster redesigns. The 25 grain. Yeah, and that's low for that's that pellet. That it's one likes to go fast. Yeah, so those are the two weights of spectrum that I tested uh, mm -hmm. between 18 grain and 25 grain. So oh. I didn't drop below that with the JSBs or the HN because that's just that would be screaming hot. You know, way too yeah. fast. What speed uh, before you go on? Sorry to interrupt you, but yeah. we hit it. I want to hit it on this one too. But those redesigns. So we know that the Diablo shaped pellet <laughs> likes to be 850, 880. That's kind of the sweet spot. Nine is pushing it. Nine, nine, ten is pushing it. What do you What do you normally see for that? Those JSB redesigns shaped corn cobs. Yes, the redesigns I found typically like to shoot like to shoot hot. You know, above 900 feet per second. Yeah, nine to nine 
I would say nine to nine forty. Yes. Is kind of the sweet spot for those pellets. Yeah. And yours was shooting eight twenty five with those. Yes. Yeah. So you were between a rock and a hard place. <laughs> yes, between a rock and a hard place. Uh -huh. So, um, so I shot the JSB eighteen grain, the H and N eighteen grain, uh -huh. and then the H and N um, extreme hunter extreme. Yeah. Everything in between 18 and all the Barracudas, the Barracuda, the Barracuda Hunter Extreme, yeah. the Barracuda Hunter, yeah, the, the, the X, the big hollow points, uh, all of them. And um, those didn't shoot very well, uh, the ones in between. But what did shoot good were the HN 18 grain, the JSB 18 grain, and surprisingly, the JSB Monster Redesigns. At what, at what distance? This this is at this is my fifty yard target here. Your fifty, yard, dude. Those those CZ barrels, I will say, are the most forgiving barrels on the planet. Yes. They just don't up. care. Oh wow. Yeah. Oh, right. back up. I can see. Back up. Back up. Oh, can you? Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Back up more. More. Keep keep going. Yep. 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 Because Skype's gonna cut the ends off of our two. Oh okay. Yeah. Videos. Yeah. See this? Yeah, that's pretty good. I'll show them a picture on the screen. Just send All me right. a picture. But, so. Yeah. I was really happy with the H and N eighteen grains. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you can see I took a little um, MOA circle and I cut a circle around everything that was under MOA. Mm -hmm. you see the little circles I cut? Yeah, that's perfectly adequate for hunting at fifty. Yes, and it was like it was it was butt ass cold and windy. So <laughs> I, I'm okay with a little bit of uh, horizontal drift. What I didn't want to see was vertical drift, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. So two out of the three H and N. MOA, Those are really good. All three J JSB 18 grain MOA and all three Monster Redesign 25. That is so weird. Yeah. Is, by the way, that H and N 18 grain, that's a brand new pellet, guys. So if you're scratching your head looking at that, that's that's one they just came out with. And yeah. Yeah. So that's cool. You found success with it. I was really pleased. I was surprised they were that accurate at. Yeah. That speed and mm -hmm. the 25 grain surprised me at only 820 feet per second. And so. you know, that that's why we do this, right? Because I'm coaching my audience all the time. Diablo shape, 850 to 880. Redesign shape, 900, 940. You know, slugs, anywhere between 750 and 1200. You just never know. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah. And now, it's, I, didn't, I didn't shoot any slugs out of this yet. Okay. Um, my, my slug selection isn't quite as vast as yours, but if I do shoot some slugs, it'll probably be on the lighter side. And you'll, you'll put that information up on the Ergo Nation forum. It'll be stickied, right? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, after we finish this video, I'm going to start a share and compare topic for us. Perfect. Where we can just load it full of all kinds of juicy stuff for everybody. Perfect. Hey, a uh, segue, juicy stuff. Before I forget, let me get this gun out of the way. So, cool little story here. So, JSB contacted Michael and I about a month ago, and they're like, hey, we got about um, 600 pieces of clothing of each of these hoodies and long sleeve tees and short sleeve tees. Um, they got like 600 of each color, 600 of each of the three, short sleeve, long sleeve, a couple of different hoodies. So like, you know, would you guys want to help us unload them to the Airgun Nation members and the AAC followers? And they're like, we'll pay a little commission. And we're like, hell yeah. So guys, limited quantities. If you want a JSB hoodie, um, JSB tees, whatever, um, I'll put a link uh, in the video description down below. And Michael will put that same link over at the Airgun Nation forum. Um, and if you click through that link, we're going to help JSB get rid of all this limited production apparel they've got. And uh, Michael and I will each get a little bit of a commission for you guys using that link. And uh, and we'd really appreciate that. Um, uh, it's quick, really nice stuff, too. It's nice. It's, it's <laughs> nice. I mean, it's nice stuff. Um, I will say on the sizing, so normally I wear a medium in everything. But they're, but these shrink down a little bit. Like they sent me some testers a couple weeks ago. I, I put on a um, medium and then it was great. I put it in the wash and now it only fits on Katya, my <laughs> wife. I couldn't get into it. I was like, 
<laughs> you know, but so, so this is a large, so give yourself some, some size up. I'm five, five, 180 pounds. And, um, the large fits me really well. And I haven't put this in the wash yet, but if I do wash it, I'm definitely going to be drying it on cool <laughs> when I wash it. Not if I wash it, yeah, right. I'm not that hippy dippy. That's Perfect. My... <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. yeah. I love Cool. Oh, and you'll notice um, we have these cool t-shirts on. These came from Air Guns of Arizona. I don't know if they have any left, but if you want those, get over to their website because their stuff is, uh, is awesome as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's enough about that. Almost forgot. We got a gun to talk about. All right, so right under the barrel is the bottle. Should we, we kind of hit that? Yeah, sure. You're right, so, bigger than mine. Yeah, well, you know, that's what she said. <laughs> so, um, so something really cool on this 30 cal tactical 260 guys it comes with a 500 cc carbon fiber bottle with a 300 bar fill that's a lot of air a lot of power on tap okay the thing you also want to keep in mind guys is so this is an air reservoir but it's also an air reservoir from here to here yes that's all filled with air. So you get all that as well. I mean, I'm going to guess that there's at least 100, 100, 125 cc's in there. If you know what it is, yeah, I don't know what it is. You got it? You have 613 cc's. So below. it's 113 cc's here plus the 500 bottle. Where did you get that? I was looking everywhere for it. Well, you know what? The Caliber Gun USA website is, is really good. Uh, so check it out if you haven't been there. All right, cool. And I'm guessing this is the regulator back in this little sleeve, so they can probably just unscrew it and screw it on. Okay, but anyway, enough about that. So I put this thing on the lab radar. Um, I ran, I'm trying to remember how many shots I put through it. I probably put a couple of hundred shots through it to get it, make sure that there, if there was any break-in or settling in and that needed to be done, that was out of the way. And then I cronied it. Guys, I got, I, on a 300 bar fill, I got 60 shots on the reg at 84 foot pounds with an extreme spread of 14 and a standard deviation of 3.5. So I was incredibly impressed with that. That is a lot of 84 foot pound shots to carry around in the field with you um, when you go hunting or whatever. Um, and I know a lot of you are gonna ask me, uh, oh, the 300 bar fill thing, we've covered that before. Maybe we can touch on it again here quickly. But for those of you that only want to fill to 250 bar, I ran that test as well. Subtract 14 shots. So you're going to get 60 less 14. And that's going to be your shot chart with those numbers. So mega, mega impressive. Um, Great. Steve, I'm going to interrupt you. While yeah. you're talking, I used my, my calculator. Yeah, yeah. You're getting about 10... 10 cc's per shot. Efficient. Efficient. Yeah. So hey, foot pounds. Speaks volumes, guys. Awesome, yeah. awesome contribution there, buddy. Pointing that out. So at 1800 bucks, I'm right there with two thousand dollar air guns as far as tuned efficiency. I mean, good, good stuff. Good valving, good regulator, right out of the box without me fiddling with anything. And like I said, if you wanted to tweak, there's an external hammer spring adjuster back here. Um, that I'm I'm guessing is clockwise for more and counter for less. I don't know. Yeah. But um, yeah, yeah. 80, 83.76 foot pounds. Off the reg at about 130 bar, by the way. My reg it, right up there is where you start seeing it fall. That's pretty low for the regulator. Uh, that's about where you see them on the other brands, I feel like, in this 120, 130 is about where I've seen them. You and brand X. If they have big enough plenums, yeah, and long mm -hmm. enough barrels, right? Well, they've obviously got a big plenum here. Yeah. I don't know how it works on the inside, mm -hmm. but it should yeah. also be noted um, on the Caliber Gun website. Mm -hmm. They have all kinds of other accessories and options. You can actually purchase larger plenums for these rifles. Really? Yep. I realize that. Yeah, it's that's a great website. Mm -hmm. Anyways, on to the uh, Caliber Gun 45 22 caliber. Uh -huh. In the OEM version, I got 109 shots on the regulator. You poor bastard. How long did it take you to crony that? 
a long time. Yeah. Uh, so I had um, an average of 800. Uh, oh, I used the monster redesigns for this particular string. Uh -huh. So I got 822 feet per second average. Uh huh. 831 max, 814 minimum. But the spread was uh, 17, and the standard Good. deviation was four. So Good. Very respectable for, um, I, I would say, probably being maxed out with the hammer. Yeah. Yeah, my findings are always that at 100 yards, if you're in 20, 25 foot per second extreme spread, you're fine. It really doesn't make that much of a difference for point of impact. Now, when you get into crazy, crazy wins, or you're competing for ten and twenty thousand dollar purses at some of these big air gun competitions, you know you're going to want to shrink that down into the twelve two range for ES and SD to be a little bit less susceptible to headwinds and tailwinds and crosswinds. But I mean, you should be able to shoot one inch groups at a hundred yards, no problem with a anything inside twenty twenty five feet per second. Sure, sure, sure. And in my configuration, I got uh, about four point three cc's to use per shot. Wow, even more efficient. And I, oh, and I have a total of 477 cc's with this hybrid reservoir. You know, That's a lot for that little gun. That's yeah. about 500 cc's. Do you remember the overall length on that thing without a moderator? Because that looks pretty um, tiny without that Donny on there. It, it is tiny. 20, 24 inches maybe? It, it looks like, yeah, yeah, it looks like. Because uh, it's an 18 inch barrel. Ah, it's 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 compact. Yeah, twenty-eight ish. I'll bet you twenty-eight. It's tiny. Mm -hmm. it's, am I in full screen here? Can you see? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. It won't show me till the end, and I put it all together. Oh, yeah, darn it's, Skype. It's tiny. Yeah. Um, hey, on the three hundred bar fill thing, guys, just to touch on it really quick. That's super advantageous. Obviously, um, those extra fifteen shots if you want to go out in the field all day and not have to carry a, a bottle with you. Um, it's also advantageous, like if you're in Texas where Michael is and it's freezing outside, you fill your gun up inside where it's 68 degrees, then you go out in 40 and your 300 bar fill after 30 minutes without having taken a single shot is a 280 bar fill just because that air in your cylinder condensed and you've lost those shots. So, you know, there are real advantages to it. Um, yeah. Those are the two quick ones that I can think of. Sure. You know, I when I, I also filled to 300 bar, which I didn't mention, mm -hmm. uh, my com my compressor fills maximum about 310 bar. Um, mm -hmm. So I would fill my tank, fill this to 300 bar. I let it sit in my garage in the cold mm -hmm. and yeah, it dropped to about 280 and then yeah. I it off again before I went out. Yeah. Um, and, and I got to I got to tell you something, Steve. Yeah, but I just. Guess. I couldn't leave well enough alone with the hammer. You never can. You tinker till you break it. <laughs> with Did you the break hammer. something? <laughs> I, no, I didn't break anything. But I couldn't, I just couldn't leave it. You tuned it? I couldn't leave it alone. It's not a tuning guide. <laughs> no, I just wanted to see. I just turned the hammer back a little oh, yeah. bit. Okay? Yeah. yeah. Just a little bit because I wanted to see if I you could. 18 grain. With the 18 grade, about 900 feet per second, right? Uh, 930 is just ridiculously fast, right? Yeah, that's really, that's, that's pushing My shot way. count went from 109 to 150 shots. Oh, my God. Yes. At 900. And about, it, it actually, it rose up, you know, average of 905. Oh, my God. You know, there's going to be some, you know, uh, you, we read with, you know, the audience, you know, what you say, guys, is important. I pay attention. I read everything. You know, there's always the guy that comes along. Oh, I shoot at 9.30, 9.40 all the time. And that's all they say. They don't give you any of the information. If I'm shooting at 30, 40 yards, I might be able to get away with 9.30, 9.40. If I'm shooting at 60, 70 yards in the wind, that pellet that's flying pretty straight at 9.30, 9.40 starts doing this out at those distances, especially when you start getting headwinds and tailwinds. It just destabilizes. The, it has a tendency to destabilize the tar out of that stuff. So... I don't want to take anything away from you if you're having success up short, but I have never, ever, ever seen an instance where the Diablo shape pellet is stable at, you know, 60, 70, 80 yards in the wind at those 930, 940 speeds. You always got to bring it down to 850 to 880, 890, something like that. These groups were at the 930 mark, but 
I may try shooting a few more groups at about 900 feet. Per well, you might, you might see that 5 eighths inch group shrink to a 3 eighths inch group too, which matters when you're trying to hit a squirrel in the head and not yeah. knock his nose off, you know? So those things are important. Yeah. Or at least they're important to me. Yeah. <laughs> Don't ask me how I know. But for this vlog, I, I'm I, I shot those groups straight as the gun came to me. From okay. So. Good stuff, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Cheater. <laughs> so for you for those of you wanting to know why I didn't um mess with the hammer spring, so when I when I put these guns through the AEAC review process for whatever company that hires me to do that, um I always give them an option, do you want a tuning guide or not? And the tuning guides are a lot of extra time for me and a lot of extra money for them. So it doesn't always make sense for them and they don't always say yes. So it just wasn't asked of me of this time on this one, and that's why I, I didn't mess with it. So you're going to get a review as as I got it out of the box, accuracy and all. Yeah. Um, okay, so next, uh, Picatinny above and below. I got like a long three, three and a half inches of pick. Weaver, Weaver on the bottom, Weaver on the top. Um, that's generous and that's good to see. It's solid too. There's yeah, no there's no flex in there. I don't know what else you could add about that. Um, I guess let's get into the cocking arm because there's kind of some stuff to talk about with the cocking arm. What the hell am I doing over here? So something huge that Caliber Gun is doing is they're going through their lineup and their cocking arms all used to be back here. And they're moving them all up here, which is super, super good to see. And um, what's so cool about this one is it's reversible. So... If I actually owned this gun, I love having my hand just right here, and I love being able to cycle over here on the left side while I'm shooting. Um, it's very easy to do. There's four screws. You take the panel off. You can switch it right over. I think that's going to be humongous for lefties or for righties like myself who like that flexibility. The other thing I want to add is the cocking stroke is very, it's very smooth. Um, and I would say it's moderately weighted, which I would expect for 84 foot pounds. And everything feels good. It feels very typical, very typical caliber gun. I've been playing with caliber guns for at least six years. It's actually the first retail high end PCP I ever purchased for myself, the old Cricket 2 Standard 22. There's a video of that about five years back on my other YouTube channel, but. Really impressed with what they're doing with their lineup with this side lever cocking and really good to see. Shows that they're listening. Yeah. Uh, I I like that it's it's ambidextrous, it's switchable. Um, now for shooting if you're if you're mobile, you're out and about, I still prefer it being on the right side. Because mm. it's it's difficult sometimes to hold all the weight with your 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 shooter hand and cock on the left side. Uh huh. But when you're on the bench, of course, I'd be love. I'd love to just. Yeah, or if you're leaning on a tree, I love leaning it like on a tree or something or on a log. But for out in the field, I like to to hold it up front and then cock with my right hand. But it's mm -hmm. a great option. Um, I will tell you that this this side lever um, is much more mechanical than I thought it would be. What do you it, mean? Um, it's this is it's very stiff for me. Really? Uh, yeah, let me make sure. Especially for, what do you run in, 25-ish foot-pounds, 30 foot-pounds? Uh, 33. 33 foot-pounds. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You'd think that'd be pretty light at 33. I think it would be really light. Um, yeah. Let's get this back in here. Hey, the gun's heavy, the cocking's stiff. Maybe you need to get down there to, to Anytime Fitness or something and start <laughs> pumping some iron, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, I'm going to tell you my experience with the cocking lever. So, when I first received this, um, when I when I cocked the lever, the magazine was over indexing, mm -hmm. meaning it would skip a cylinder every time I cocked it. Mm -hmm. And um, I quickly, well, I, I reached out to AOA and um, I found that there is. Let me take the magazine out and show you. There is a little um, pin here. Let's see if you can see this. 
this pin right here in the bottom. Let me know if it. I'll take a, we'll take a picture of it and show them on the screen. Okay. So there's a little pin on the bottom that. Um, mm, okay. I see it. It's like a ball detent. It's a yes, a ball detent with a spring. Spring on it. Uh huh. So that applies pressure to the bottom of the magazine, mm -hmm. which either makes it easier or more difficult to spin. Oh, you so it controls the rotation resistance. Yes, the resistance. Yeah, cool. Mm -hmm. So I had to increase the resistance in order for it not to over-index. Because it was almost like the momentum was carrying it too far. Yes, there was too yeah. much momentum and it was over-indexing. So after I adjusted that, you know, it took me a couple minutes to adjust it, it's been oh. shooting flawlessly. How the so heck do you adjust that? To adjust it. So you take the rear butt stock off. Uh -huh. and Right directly beneath the pin. Beneath that ball detent, yeah. Ball detent is a little Allen screw. Oh, good nugget, but, buddy. Yep. Ah, so we're had, learning now. I had to increase the pressure on the magazine to slow it down from, from rotating. And now it cycles flawlessly. Haven't had any problems with it. But um, it's still, it, it's a little bit stiffer now. Um, I'll try to show you really quick here. Which makes sense because the magazine rotates when you go to cycle it. Yes. So uh -huh. that makes sense. That, Maybe you over over tightened it. I, I tried to lighten it and then it it, it, it over rotate. It. Mm. So yep. So the magazine is is mechanical and it's pretty stiff for a twenty two caliber thirty foot pound. Oh. Listen, ready? I actually have to give it a little tug. A, oh, a interesting. Firm, a little tug. Let me put a mag. Let me put a mag in and see if I got that. Yeah, but uh, this is the one thing I'm going to take you guys here. Let me just recenter this table so they can. I'm going to spill this water soon. I know it. <laughs> All right. So as long as we're on the subject, so you cock the gun. There's this little lever back here, guys. What you have to do is you have to go up on the lever all the way back to be able to put the magazine in. Kind of hold the magazine till it falls into position because this lever will, will will run through the center of that mag <clears throat> this lever's arm or pin or whatever you want to call it there it goes and um, all the way forward means it's cycling in the magazine in the center means you can manually rotate mm -hmm. the magazine let me see oh yeah I do I have that too I never noticed it though Mine definitely seems like it's uh, a bit stiffer than yours, probably because I had to increase the tension on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pull it back till it stops and then give it a little tug. Yeah, it's the same thing, so That's pull it? back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mine is definitely stiffer. Let's check this out. <laughs> Either way, it's, I, um, it's robust. Yeah, it's, it's robust. Let me put it this way. It never bothered me. Like sometimes things will pop up on my radar where I go, ooh, that's not great. I didn't have that emotion. I didn't have that experience. It's moderate cocking force. It feels clean. It doesn't feel gritty. Um, so I never really like, I never got caught up or hung up on it. So it's fine with me. The one thing I want to share with you guys is um, you're not going to be doing, you're not going to be unloading and you're not going to be taking this magazine in and out with this thing like up in your hands unless you're like Houdini or something. It's got to be on a bag because you're going to cock it. you got to hold the magazine, come up and back on this thing, and then you can take the magazine out. Unless you can somehow put it under your arm and then use the other two hands to do it. It's really set up for bench, for bench stuff. And then the, only, the other thing I want to add, there's three positions. There's all the way in the back, which lets you yank the magazine, and it's spring-loaded. It kind of falls forward to the middle. Now the middle position, as I cock the gun, the magazine doesn't rotate. So if you have, you know, you can that can be a, a good situation where if I've cocked, if I've already chambered around, and then I want to decock the gun to walk around and feel safe, in addition to the manual push button safety, I can always go to that middle position, and then when I'm ready to cock again to take my shot, it doesn't cycle a second pellet or into a, into the chamber. And then the, the position where you just go up and all the way to the front will start cycling the magazine. We'll start cycling the magazine again. The so, middle position is always 
is well useful if you're you're out hunting and yeah. say, take your last shot and you know you need another shot and you don't want to fiddle with the magazine you can just put it in the center insert a pellet from the side and manually index it into place mm. oh yeah i on this one i can't get a pellet in from the side oh it, i looked at that and it wouldn't fit and it might be because of the 30 you can't get a slug in you can't get a pellet in Gotcha. But maybe the 20, I don't know why the 22 would be able to. You wouldn't think it'd be a narrower frame. Mm. Maybe it is a narrower frame. It's a, it's a nice option. Mm. Are you sure you can get one in from the side? Yep, because um, it's, this is a 14-round magazine, mm -hmm. and all of my targets I shot five-shot five groups. So I had to add one pellet and then index it to shoot my last one. Interesting. Yeah, okay, another good nugget. Yep. Not with the 30 cal, with the 22 cal. Another thing I really liked what, while we're on the cocking and everything is there is a... Um, oh, yeah. The, the, yep. what, what do you call it? A live round indicator? or a, uh, I call it a cocking indicator. Cocking indicator. A little red ball that comes out mm -hmm. uh, uh, over the hammer is to show you that there's it's, it's been cocked. Yeah. That's in the owner's manual. I read about that. Um, on the topic of that, Michael, uh, so the butt pad is adjustable. This position here is kind of where I wanted it for, for the bench work that I did last week with it. Um, and it's interesting, this adjusts down quite a bit, of course, centers, and it'll go higher than it currently is. But if I set it any higher than it currently is, I can't cock the gun ah. because that red pin indicator comes out and runs into this butt pad. I was yeah. a little disappointed in that. I felt like that was a touch that could have been addressed somehow by maybe making this butt pad channel a little bit deeper. Um, so yeah. that was that wasn't great, but I was you know it is what it is. A few uh, some markings on the hammer spring adjuster would be useful. Um, yeah, for sure. I actually took a little silver sharpie and made a dot so I could keep track of it. Yeah, that's good. That's what I do. No. Yeah. Yeah, or even if they just even if they just embossed like a little white or gray dot on here, would be great. Nothing fancy, no numbers, you know, but just some some feedback. Yeah. Um, on the filling, I know we're kind of messing up our end to end, but um, the way the filling works on this guys is it's got a little plastic plug here. Not a fan. I dropped it in. I didn't actually drop it in the sand. So I was out doing my testing and I had it on the picnic table and a gust of wind came and it wound up in the sand under the picnic table because it's light. It's plastic. Um, so I don't know. Just something that happened to me that I wanted to pass on to you guys to just be ready for it so it doesn't happen to you. And filling, I'm still using um, this Edgun Easy Fill, which is basically just an air chuck for your air gun. Um, I'm going to review it again with this gun. You'll see a review of this in my last two reviews with the uh, Air Max Catron. But um, super, super cool tool. And then here's the fill probe. The fill probe came with a threaded. I think it's a 1 8 or 1 quarter. And um, I didn't have any blowout problems all the way up to uh, 300 bar at all. And I, I put a lot in it over yeah. the last couple weeks. I've been using it quite a bit. Yeah. Hey, let me ask you, Steve. Um, this version that I have, there's some type of flow restrictor in here um, because I have a fast fill carbon fiber tank. Uh -huh. With it all the way open, it it limits the amount of air that'll flow. How fast this will fill? Is yours okay. like that? I honestly don't know because this Edgun Easy Fill kind of does that. Um, I wouldn't call it a slow fill. I wouldn't call it a fast fill. I'd call it a just right fill. I'd call it a, I'd call it a somewhere between medium and fast. It's in that window. <clears throat> but I didn't notice anything like that. Um, hmm. Yeah. But uh, I just wanted to point it out. Not a huge fan of this. What I am, a, what I am a huge fan of, is. Um, by the way, these Edgun Easy Fills you can get at Air Guns of Arizona. I don't know if they have them in stock. You might need to call because the website just might not be updated yet. But what I am a big fan of is Caliber Gun starting to put their manometer on the sides. As a Caliber Gun fanboy over the years, it's it's 
often been at the front of the cylinder underneath, which I never had a problem with because you could just, you know, you could see it from the side. And it was real pretty. It had colors in it and stuff. But this is cool. This is a nice evolution, getting this manometer up here on the side. I found it to be dead on. Oh, mine too. Dead on. I don't know where they're getting them or who's making them, but that's a good manometer, yep. which is rare to, to have them be dead on, I feel like. Mine was spot on too. Awesome. Um, I don't think there's a whole lot to talk about except left left uh, trigger and comfort and overall build and maybe some of these features. You want to? Yeah. There? Yeah. Uh, I, I saw you uh, stroking the cheek piece here, thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> I was able to check out the uh, the new laminate versions that they have as well. Okay. Some really neat colors, uh, forest greens and oranges mm. and stuff. And nice. uh, this synthetic piece on ours is a laminate wood piece on the other ones. Mm. So nice. Is a nice. I, have, I um I didn't mind this synthetic. It felt fine up against the cheek. It's just a piece of plastic. Yeah, it's it's better than putting your cheek on uh, on metal, especially if it's cold out. It is. Some might be concerned with this ninety degree angle here, but it is beveled. And it feels perfectly fine. I've got adjustable sports match rings up here that are at their lowest setting. And um, I've got a really good line of sight here. So it's comfortable. Uh, build quality, I feel like this is just right at the top. Yeah. Yeah, it's built. You know what it reminds me of? You know, I don't like, to me I don't like mentioning other brands. And you know, the, uh, an air, but it reminds me of the, how the Ed guns are built just like brick. <laughs> they're just built like a brick shit house, you know? This you thing's said, like that. Yeah. There's no flex, there's no give. The shot cycle is clean and snappy. Um, it's just super rigid. It's a workhorse. I mean, it's a beast. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's solid. It's solid. The caulking arm solid. The barrel solid. The shroud solid. There's just nothing moves in here. It's um. I don't want to call it over engineered, but I would say it's definitely not built to be Formula One dainty. This is built to be used. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. the economics are fantastic. I found this this grip here. I don't know if it can be replaced or if it's an AR style. Probably not. But um, this grip was fantastic, super comfortable for me. It's funny you say that because I loved this and I loved this. And when I was talking to Air Guns of Arizona, the owner, they're like, ah, oh, you know, we got to come up with something to do something better here. And I'm like, no, it's good. Minimalist is in and the skeleton thing is in, but it's still like meaty and girthy and it has the perfect shape. I mean, I don't have super small hands, but I don't have the biggest hands either. This is awesome. This is awesome. You got dual magazine storage in here with a little, again, sprung ball detent to hold the magazine in place. Snaps in and snaps out. Um, it's not the nicest piece of lumber. It looks like stained alder wood to me. <laughs> I don't know. My guess would be alder wood. It's not finished really, stained really heavy at the top here. No. But it's, it's finished. Good. Super functional. And this grip for me, uh, this uh, beaver tail right here. Yeah. So a lot of problems or I guess un discomforts I have with some other tactical or AR style grips is uh, the webbing on my hand, if they don't include this really, this beaver tail here, my hand rests right on, you know, sharp edges of metal on, on some mm. other brands. Mm -hmm. uh, but this one, oh, it is, it's like, Slipping into some some silky Egyptian thread sheets. <laughs> it's, it's good. It feels Target boutique. It feels good. Yeah. I know. I, I mean, I, I'm with you. I got to say, this is probably one of the best grips I've grabbed on an air gun. You know, grip is such a subjective thing because everybody's hands are different. But this one just works for me. I really, really, really like it. And I like this. And I like the butt pad. It's rubber. It's wide. It's got little. It's got little stippling on there to grab onto you. Um, I like the minimalist look. I hope they don't change it because this is super cool. Yeah. I mean, you take the you take the bipod off of this thing, 
This is an uh, uh, an AccuTac BR4 G2, by the way. A lot of you are going to ask me that after the video. But look at that. This is nice. Nice deal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk trigger, and then I'll I'll come in behind you and. Sure. Um, I have zero complaints about the trigger. I'm a I'm a trigger snob, but um, this it was a great trigger right out of the box. I didn't adjust it at all. Um, I even shot it with some lightweight gloves on a few days because it was so cold. Mm -hmm. And um, if anything, I would actually put a little more weight on the trigger uh, because it, um, I let a couple fly with my gloves on that I wasn't expecting. Uh -huh. Um, but without gloves, fantastic trigger. It is light. Uh, mine came breaking at a pound, one pound, two tenths of an ounce, I think, if I remember, something like that. Um, nice wide metal blade. Sorry, my wife's my wife's telephone is going off in the background while we're trying to make a video. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me let me speak. The only thing that I would like to see a little bit heavier is the safety. Uh, the safety is functional, but mine, I mean, you graze against it and my safety turns off. Without oh, mine's, even, not, mine's not like that. Yeah, I mean, look at this, watch. Like barely, barely grazing my finger on it, it, it disengages it, so. Oh, interesting, mine's not like that. Mine is, um, it's a click. It's a uh, push, if I tap it, it ain't going anywhere. It's a push and a click. That said, this is new for Caliber Gun. This new, they used to have, and I hate them, Ataman uses them, um, Air Max uses them. The push pin style of safeties, I can't stand those things where they're like, where they come all the way through the stock and stuff. For this years, works fantastic. Didn't at all. Yeah, I pull them out because you can't, I can't get the triggers adjusted to where I want to, but this thing works great. Metal blade, nice and wide. Safety's in a good spot. Nice tactile click. It's got little, it's got little laser etching in the aluminum over here, letting you know where you're at on the safety, which I thought was super cool. And um, nice, big, heavy, sturdy trigger guard. I feel like I could drop the gun on the table right there and it still <laughs> protect it. Yet it's a super minimalist design. It, the trigger's great, and to break it a pound on a linkage design and be a dual stage and feel really good and clean, that's an accomplishment. It feels good. It feels like a regular trigger on a regular rifle. Agreed. I like it. Yeah. Um, what are we missing, buddy? Let's see. I know as soon as I click stop, I'm going to be like, ah, I wish I had talked about that. Uh, <laughs> uh, you, already, you already showed them the, uh, the magazine holders built in, yeah. right? I know what I want to talk about. Yes. This new scope from MTC. Oh, that is so small. Yeah, so before this one, my favorite was, I think it's called an MTC Ultralight. That was my favorite in the MTC lineup. Mamba Ultralight, I think it is. This is my new favorite. So this is called the Copperhead. It's insanely small. It's like this thing. This thing is 11 inches long, Ooh. and it, it, it behaves like a big boy scope, and it weighs a little bit over a pound. It's got oh. the multi-coated lens, a glass-etched reticle, reticle AMD, AMD2 reticle, I think they call it. It's illuminated. It's got plenty of north-south so that you can get your holdover right. The, um, it's a, it's a uh, 4 to 16 by 44, if I remember. The magnification on this one turns smoother. I want to say lighter than any MTC I've ever touched. Same thing with the side AO. It's got a nice light um, rotation to it. The clicks are super nice. Did what I told it to do. Um, and you're in the $480 price point. MTC Copperhead. Wow. I, I love it. It reminds me a lot of the Hawk Compact. But I, I would say that this is a little bit nicer because the Hawk Compact is very sensitive to eye relief. You got to be like right there. This, man, I'm good. I have full image right there. What is that, about four inches, Michael? I can't tell. Oh, that's fantastic. That's exactly what I was going to ask you is 
typically with compact scopes, you give up some something with like eye relief. Yeah. But uh, not that one, huh? Not this one. And I got 15 mil dots. Wow. So even if I even if I didn't have the these adjustable scope mounts, um, I'd be able to have, have no problems at 50 and 100 yards. That said, when I was running um, running this and running this. I had these sports match mounts totally leveled out, so I had no problem getting on paper using just the scope at 50 yards, and I had no problem ringing that steel at 150 yards, mm. just without having to put any any elevation into it. So that's a really yeah, you, using really those 15, offer. huh? That, that's a really um, appealing offering from them because. There's a these days. There's a lot more compact air guns than ever before. I think there are, and there's a lot of scopes in that four to five hundred dollar price point. There's Optison, there's Hawk, there's MTC, there's you know Element. There's a mm -hmm. lot of really good stuff out there now, and they're all fighting for that four or five hundred dollar spot, and they're just getting better and better. And I'm super impressed with this. You know, I don't have the greatest eyes now up close. And I, even with this uh, ocular in the back, I had no problem just dialing everything in, and it's barely even used any of any its any of its focusing ability. You know, it's got like a lot more in here. So I don't know. I'm really impressed with it. They're not. On, and surprisingly, I was on AOA's website last night. They're not on the website. Huh? It well. comes from. They're the importer distributor, Precision Air Gun Distribution guys, and so call them if you want one of these things. They are sweet. I think a lot of you are going to like them. I really do. Cool. I'll have to check it out. Yeah. Mounts to the sports match height adjustables. I forget the exact number. Um, I love, you know what? I run sports match on everything. You know, me too. Me I too. just love them. Me too. So when I first got my start with YouTube, um, I didn't know any of these companies really and they reached out to me and they're like hey we want to be a part of what you're doing we'd like to support your youtube channel and i was like sure <laughs> and now that i've gotten to play with all the mounts um i can't think of a mount that i like better i will say masood's mounts the eagle vision mounts are amazing but these are these things are phenomenal too it's the um atp 72 ATP 72 30 millimeter adjustable elevation mounts are what I have. Yeah, that's what I'm running too. Yeah. So um, I think that that's pretty much it, guys. There's going to be more in the full review. Like I said, 50 yard testing, 100 yard testing. We'll get the sound meter with and without the shroud. We'll get all this ammo through here, see what it likes. I may run another shot chart. I'm not sure. We'll get the trigger testing in there. There'll be all sorts of good nuggets in there for you, but. And that'll be on the other YouTube channel, AEAC Home, or the Argon Exploration and Advancement channel. I do want to share, like, um, I've got about 6,000 of you following me now on Instagram, and my Instagram account is hooked on air. A lot of you ask what I'm up to every day. Uh, my Instagram is kind of like my direct feed to you guys. So, like, if I learn something, I instantly take a picture of it, oftentimes write a tech note, Put that on Instagram. So if you want to know what I'm doing day to day, minute to minute, hour to hour, follow me on Instagram, Hooked On Air, and uh, you'll see all sorts of learnings that I've been kind of, you know, discovering with the caliber gun here. And and uh, you can hit me up on Facebook too, but that's more of a recap press release type of venue. And then I'm on Air Gun Nation forum with Michael under AEAC. I take questions and and all those places. So <clears throat> yeah, hey Steve. Yeah, there's there's also something um, special with the the model that you have right there. It's special. Yes, something special, something very special for one lucky person. Oh, I forgot all about that. Well, that's your bag. Yeah. I think well, review discuss win is an AEAC thing. It is not, guys. It's an Air Gun Nation forum thing. I'm just lucky enough to be able to kick it off for you guys with AEAC kind of being the tip of the spear for that event. But that's all, Michael. Yeah, that's right. We so right now Steve and I are doing the share and compare between these two. But after everything is concluded, after the share and compare, after the vlog, after Steve's full review, over on the Ergon Nation forum, we are going to give away 
Well, not everything, but almost everything you see on Steve's table right there. Is, so, it, is this included? I, I, I'll have to double check on that, but I'm pretty sure you don't, you want to keep those glasses and your mouse and everything yeah, else. What there. about this cool um, zero dB moderator? That, that is cool. You know, that reminds me of a SIG, uh, one of the SIG stackable moderators they're making. Mm, it's or cool. silencers, they would call them. But. I do want to take this opportunity to, to make clear with you guys. Um, it's not Michael and I that are really giving this away. We're, we're the guys carrying the mail. The, you know, this is Caliber Gun. This is Air Guns of Arizona. This is MTC. This is Zero DB. You know, this is Nielsen Specialty Ammo. This is JSB and Predator, and FX to get them. All of these companies, guys, come together on the Airgun Nation Forum and on AEAC to give back to you guys. It's them. It's not us. You know, We're just kind of delivering the message. So when you get on the forums, when you get on our YouTube channels, um, you know, if you like that and you want to encourage them to keep that going, I mean, they've been doing it for years with us. I don't think anyone's ever said no when we've asked them, and that is a really blessing, a real blessing that um, – I think I speak on both our behalves that we're very grateful to have that in place. So thank them, guys. Let them know that you appreciate it because there's no reason for them to keep giving away product if you guys aren't partaking, entering, talking about how much you appreciate that. I mean, what, what's their incentive? Because, you know, looking at it from their perspective, giving away doesn't sell air guns for them, you know? And so, you know, that is a really, really nice thing that they've gifted upon us all, and we want to keep that going. But um, it is a simple lottery-based giveaway, no strings attached. Literally, you go over to the Airgun Nation forum, you pick a random number, you plop it into the body of the thread, and you're in. And you'll wind up with a caliber gun, a moderator, a scope, mounts, pellets, slugs, you know, ball caps from H and N, Lord's Lord knows what else. So, yeah, help us help you, please. Yeah, Get that stuff. It's all. I always scratch my head how I've got eighty-five thousand subscribers, and you've got like six or seven hundred thousand followers over there at the Airgun Nation forum, and we come to the end of these events with like twenty-five hundred entries. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you gotta wonder what people don't like free stuff or what. But I know. <laughs> We do, you know. I think a, a really good gauge is um, all the discussion threads that we start, because there are just pages and pages and hundreds of replies on Airgun Nation, on AEAC, um, just you know, enamored with with what we're doing with their products, and and really grateful and thankful for all of the partners. Um, who are getting behind this? Yeah, for sure. We are grateful for you guys that are that, that have spoken up and and um, you know it's just we just want to make sure that they know that that you guys appreciate it. Otherwise, I just don't see any incentive for them to continue it. So we're all kind of in this together. And um, yeah, so if we can keep that going, that's going to be good for everybody. Because the more more of you that enter, and guys, twenty five hundred people. In a giveaway is nothing. You know, that's a very good odd odds in your favor of winning. The odds are great. And keep yeah. the discussion alive. That's, yeah, that's... sure. Tell your friends, tell your family, get entered in there. And don't forget, description down below for some cool limited production JSB Predator apparel. Like I said, they only got about 600 of each style and color, and then they're going to be gone. And I got a feeling like they're going to go quick. So check out that link on Airgun Nation forum and down below to take advantage of that. And um, I will see you later in a couple of weeks on my other YouTube channel with the full review and on the Airgun Nation forum when we kick this uh, kick this event off. You got anything to add, buddy? No. Thanks so much for having me, Steve. Thank you, buddy. And uh, thanks, guys, for tuning in. And let us know if you like this style of vlog. Uh, the, the one uh, two weeks back with PJ Clark, you guys, I got a lot of good feedback on that one. And a lot of you watched it in a short amount of time. I think nine or 10,000 of you have already looked at it. Um, I, I like this. I'd like to keep it going. So let us know when you, what you think down below. Thanks, guys. And thanks, Michael. See you, man. Thank you, Steve. Take care, everybody.